This is Friday Night Hoops with Orlando Sanchez, sponsored by Carl's Jr. All roads lead to the Tacoma Dome in Washington. For the first time in two years, the high school basketball playoffs are here. The boys tip on Saturday, the girls districts taking center stage on Friday night. What is good everyone? My name is Orlando and this is Friday Night Hoops. We start with 4A ball and the Camus Papermaker. The top seed from the Greater St. Helens League hosting the Rogers Rams out of Puyallup. Camus cheerleaders in playoff mode. And the visitors come out firing. Divinity Singleton may have been in Puyallup when she took that shot. Rogers up early. Camus matches with three of its own. Reagan Jamison from the arc. Impressive. And the papermakers printing money from deep. They leave Riley Sands open and that's not a good idea. Camus dominates. They're moving on after a 65-34 blowout. Over to Skyview High School we go. Storm hosting the Curtis Vikings from the Tacoma area. Raise your hand if you've missed playoff basketball. I know I have. Storm come out running. Kiki Parks to the right spot. Three ball corner pocket. Skyview up early. Vikings can match you speed for speed. Peyton Akins off to the races coast to coast for two. We got more fast breaking for you. Off the turnover, Annalise Carroll, the steal, gets it up to Skylar Grosbeck. Skyview into the winner's bracket with a 62-47 W at home. The Union Titans see their season come to an end up in Olympia. They lose 46-28 to the Bears. Union finishes with 12 wins on the year. 3A ball, stop me if you've heard this before. The Prairie Falcons are in the playoffs. The decades long streak continues as they host Timberline at a Lacey to open districts. The visiting Blazers attacking early. Avery Angier, right place, right time. Oh, but don't worry, Prairie answers. Madison Klaus drawing the defense, then dumps it off to Kai Fraley. Three ball is good. This one back and forth, but Prairie used to being on this stage, and it showed. Falcons move on after a 51-42 win. More 3A scores. Kelso advances in the winner's bracket with a 61-49 win over Bonnie Lake. Heritage falls short against Auburn Riverside. The t Wolf season ends with a 52-47 loss. Down here in Oregon, everyone's chasing Mountainside in the Metro League. The Mavericks with a chance to strengthen their lead, visiting second place Beaverton. We're going all Hollywood in the home of the Beavers for the starting lineup. Lights, camera, action. Beavers firing early. Max Elmgren on the wing and nails the three. The Mavericks had answers though. Dylan Westlake with a three of his own. Two point game at the half. But Beaverton threw down with some tough defense. Christian Gonzalez locking it down. Turning turnovers into points. Beaverton wins 55-32. We head down to Southridge, third place Jesuit, over to face off with the Skyhawks. The Hawks Nest, place to be, Jesuit setting the tone early. Opening tip, Isaiah Crane to Spencer McKilligan. Just like that, it's 2-0 Jesuit. Southridge supplying the drive and kick, Lane Stricker, knocking it down. Southridge cuts Jesuit lead to 14-6, but the Crusaders weren't messing around. Off to still check this out. Cade Collins. Oh, you fancy, huh? Jesuit gets a 67-48 win on the road. Top 10 matchup on the girls' side. Number one Beaverton visiting seventh ranked Mountainside. We're in the third period. Beaverton comes out running. Emily Rice, the still in the bucket. Beaverton up 21-13. Zoe Border, the real deal, and she's getting buckets on a Friday night. Beaverton on top, 23-13. Lindsey Wilson working inside. That is just tough. Made it an 11 point game, but it was just too much Zoe Border. Beaverton holds on for the win, 33-19. Your votes take us to the top of the Three Rivers League, Lakeridge 
and Westlin, identical 7-1 records in conference, the winner in prime position to win a league title. This is your Game of the Week. Drop that beat. Give me some. These girls are an entire vibe, and I am here for it. We open things up in the second quarter. Reese Erickson doing the dishes, and this is just straight up filthy. Keely O'Halloran cash. And the same two added again. O'Halloran automatic. Lakeridge had an 11 point lead at the break. Westland, though, responds. The freshman, Allie Rodin, splash. We've got double trouble now. Isabella McVicker shaking bacon. Scoop to the hoop. And it's a sister act. Olivia McVicker off the bounce and won. The Lions got to within three, but Erickson could not be stopped. Your point guard's favorite point guard dropped 17. The Pacers grabbed first place all to themselves with a 46-39 win. We head down to Tualatin. Top-ranked Timberwolves hosting Oregon City. Tualatin primed for action on this Friday night. The OSAA's top-ranked team got off to a fast start. Great ball movement here. Malik Ross on the receiving end. Slices in for two. Oregon City kept it close for a little while. Camden Fowler, the Pioneers' big man. Beautiful touch here on the jump hook. But the Timberwolves just had too much to deal with. Ross doing it off the bounce. And he's dropping in for two. Tualatin holds off Oregon City, 63-44. To the PIL, Cleveland and Wells battling for second place behind the Benson Texters. Going head to head in Southwest Portland. Fourth quarter, Wells sharing the rock. Charlotte Richmond, flick of the wrist. But here comes Cleveland. Addie Huss, the sophomore, coast to coast. But the night belonged to Elisa DeGiulio and company. Wells gets the W, 42 to 25. College basketball now, it's one of our favorite weekends. The Ducks and Beavers facing off for a rivalry. Round one in Corvallis on a Friday night. Talia von Olhoffen finished an assist shy of a triple-double. There she feeds Taya Corsdale for three, and the Beavs, they lead by one after three periods. We got a game. This was back and forth most of the night until Niara Sobley putting in work. The hoop and harm, she had a double-double, and that got a 14-2 run going because the Ducks D clamps it down. Maddie Sure comes up with the steal, gets the break rolling, and she'll be rewarded for her work. Ducks had a monster fourth quarter, getting 74-66 win in Corvallis. But guess what, folks? The teams will run it back Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock. A little Super Bowl appetizer for you.